and welcome to the Pet Squirrel Speaks. Today is Tuesday, February, following, and this is episode 138. Ow! Hi, I'm your hostess, also known as Amy Beth. I'm your hostess, Amy Beth. I mean, I'm also known as Amy Beth, <laughs> but I'm also, also known as the Fat Squirrel on Ravelry. And then I'm also, also, also known as the Fat SQRL on Instagram. Oh, 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 I know, right? My aliases, they are plenty. <laughs> Just like had a moment where I was like, I wonder if they could identity theft my aliases. What happened if you tried to apply for credit under the Fat Squirrel? I don't know. <laughs> don't do that universe, please. I'm doing well. Things are boring. I was gonna say they were crazy. They're crazy, but only like, like in this much of my life. <laughs> only this much is crazy. Everything else is totally fine. Um, shenanigans. We didn't really have very many, but this weekend was insanely warm air. I'm sorry, all of the people that are under like 70 inches of snow. Dude, I don't know what happened. I'm sorry. We we have skated by here in central Indiana this year. Last year was terrible. This year, shh. Everything seems to be going okay. So, this weekend was like, Saturday was like 56 degrees. What? It was awesome. Sunday was the same. We went up to Eagle Creek, which is... I feel like I'm lying when I say it every time I say it, but I feel like I keep seeing the information that says the thing I'm about to say, but I still feel like it's a lie. But we went to Eagle Creek, which is theoretically the largest city park in America. Anyway, it's a big park. It's up north of town. It's a reservoir. There's lots of birding and there's a decent amount of trails. Now there are other parks in the area that have trails, but they don't have as much variety or as much length. So we decided we'd go up there. We did a little family hike, walk, whatever. Hike is kind of an ambitious term. But we did like a, t it was probably, I think we walked probably about two and a half miles, which is not that much. But it was in snow, which is a little bit more challenging. And my daughter, of course, was like, my daughter, just to clarify, my daughter is eight and she is full of 100% energy at any given moment. Like, really? She's zing, zing. And she's very fit. Uh, well, I shouldn't say that. But she's fit in the way that a child is fit in that she has excellent short-term physicality. <laughs> Her stamina, not so much. <laughs> she's a sprinter, not a marathoner. So, like, for the last, <laughs> we did get a little bit, okay, we didn't get a little bit lost. We got a little bit turned around. We didn't have a map, and we went on a different trail that we don't usually go on, and it wasn't one trail, it was, like, seven trails. They are now marked, which was very exciting. <laughs> they used to not be marked very clearly. <laughs> but now they are very clearly marked. But we still kind of got to a place where we are like, you know, my husband and I were looking at each other like, do you know which way we're supposed to go? And we both thought we were supposed to go different directions and whatever. You know, normal. But so anyway, so we, we ended up did end up walking a little bit further than we had originally intended. <laughs> of course, my mantra whenever we were hiking anywhere, and the daughter's like, "My feet, I'm exhausted. Why are there no benches?" Is the mantra is, "Dude, if mommy can do it, then you should be." But the cool thing is, we did get to see a lot of deer, and we actually got to see two jump across the path right in front of us. And I say right, like, maybe not like right in front of us, but like right in front of us. It was very exciting. And we got to see some woodpeckers, which was awesome. It was very fun. Lots of birds, but woodpeckers are always exciting because they're red. Woo! Uh, we've seen Peleades there before. We haven't seen Peleades today, but we saw them there. It's very exciting. It's just fun. Always good to go out as soon as it gets warm. Yay! Oh, but it was so funny because I was so worried about us hiking in the mud. 
And I was like, oh, ooh, you know, I'm concerned like what we're footwear wise, this is gonna be okay. Because we had like no snow at all, hardly. I mean, we had like a, not even enough to shovel. I mean, like a quarter of an inch, a half of an inch, like nothing. But I know, right? I'm sorry, I'm sorry, people. <laughs> I would feel guilty saying that. Might as well just be like, oh, we're millionaires, you know, like I'm sorry. Anyway, um, oh, but so we go up there and there's snow everywhere. I'm like, no, again, they didn't have a ton of snow, but they had enough snow that there was snow on all of the trails. What? What's that about? It's only, oh, I did find it. It's 17 miles away, but that's not as the bird flies. That's, um, that's road distance. So, what is that? It's crazy. Our city is weird. It's right on, like, a front line. It's so strange. I don't know what happens. Oh, um, I am wearing a hat. I don't know. I think it's the North Allerton hat. Is that right? It's by Sarah Cooper. And this is in her Toasty collection. Oh my gosh, she totally has a new sock collection. Right. Don't know who Sarah Kuby is. She's so fancy. And she's very cute in real life. I met her once briefly. Fancy. Anyway, she's super cute. I love this collection. I need to knit more things from it because they are all awesome. But let's face it, there are so many awesome things. Does it feel so overwhelming? I mean, in a great, wonderful way. But oh my gosh, the weight of the awesomeness sometimes pushes me into the ground for a minute. I mean, luckily then it helps to bring me back up, but you know, it's just depending on how you view it. But sometimes you get in that weird viewing of it where you're just like, ah, stop awesome, stop. And sometimes you're like, yay, awesome. It's hard to know what to do. But anyway, everything in this book is awesome. <laughs> But she has another um, sock book out, and it's gorgeous. <laughs> Makes me want to knit pattern socks, but not really. Makes me want to be able to knit them Molly Weasley style. Magic -y, magic -y style. Because I don't actually want to knit them. But they're so pretty to look at. Also, it's like all the semi-solid beautiful sock yarns in the universe. I don't need more sock yarn. No, no, no. Okay, so is that enough? What else did I say? What am I even talking about? I was talking about my hat. Bam. Um, mine is knit in Quince and Company in their fingering weight. I have no idea what colors are. And there's probably no project page because I'm awful. In case you don't know it yet. If there was a way to put a disclaimer over every episode, I probably should. That says, hi, I'm awful. I never update project pages. I'm terrible at answering emails. Generally, I'm a human being of awfulness. What can I say? My husband this week, we were doing something, what were we doing? I can't remember. At one point I was like, dude, I can't focus on that. What are you, what? Oh, he does this thing that makes me a little bit crazy. Like a little bit stabby crazy, not just like my fun normal crazy. Stabby crazy. He wants to just look at the all of the options on Netflix and Amazon Prime. Like all of the viewing options. Like he could just look at that and has for like hours. But he never announces like, hey, I'm about to look at this for an hour. You might want to find something else to do so you don't stab me. No, it's just like, all like oh, we're gonna watch a show, that's fun. And I get all like prepared. It's like channel surfing, essentially, only maybe even less entertaining. But the bad thing about it is, is because of my unique form of self-diagnosed ADD. <laughs> like he's like, why? He's like, why does this drive you so crazy? And I'm like, you know what? I really don't know, but it does drive me crazy. And I think I've tried to explain to him that, like, in my mind, at any given time, it is as if I am listening to a book on tape and watching a television show, and then also listening to a strange podcast, a strange like iTunes mix list. Like there are at least three voices going on at any time <laughs> in my head. I know, right? Some of you were like, dude, you need to be admitted. But I know some of you are in the same boat because knitting draws people like this because it helps to shut off like one of the voices, right? 
helps to quiet one of them down a bit. But TV is the same way. Like sometimes I need to have a manufactured voice to take up the space of one of the voices that I'm creating so that I only have the responsibility of creating the two voices in my head instead of the three. I sound so crazy right now, right? I know you know. If you don't know, then you're <laughs> good for you. But some of you out there are like, mm -hmm, I got seven. I only have three. I'm doing okay. <laughs> But anyway, so I don't know how this got tied into him looking at it. That was just, I don't remember how this got tied into that. Oh, I think it was because I need to have the television happening. I don't need to be thinking about the television. That's like a fifth, like a fourth voice in there. Plus your voice over here. Plus that kid's voice over there. Plus the dog. I'm like, I need to have, what if these turned off? It's like that. But anyway, do you feel like that sometimes? Please, somebody manufacture one of the voices in my head. Sometimes there's nothing going on and I still have to rewind the audiobook. <laughs> Even though I'm just sewing, I still have to rewind the audiobook because something happened up here. <laughs> I don't even know what it was, but something happened up here. And I'm like, I don't even know, what was that thing? I, cre I had the voice created for me and I couldn't even pay attention. Anyway, that's a lot of me babbling. If you identify, I have no help for you. But sometimes it's just nice to know somebody else is out there. <laughs> ah! I will never be calm and collected and earthbound. I wish I was, but I won't be. I wish I had curly hair too. Sometimes you're just made the way you're made. Okay. Anyway, let's talk about knitting and spinning. Did you know this is a podcast about knitting and spinning? Oh my gosh, right? Totally. Okay, so this next episode will have knitting and spinning, and it will have, oh, it'll have shameless self-promotion, but I'll have to go get the shameless self-promotion because I forgot to do that. Um, so hopefully I don't forget. <laughs> All those voices. Hey, one of you up there, remember that. Um, oh, but so one of the things I actually wanted to talk about that is knitting and spinning related, this is very brief, FYI, is I read a cute, or not cute, well, it was cute. It was humorous. Um, blog uh, uh, entry this week. It was by Patty Lyons, and her last name is spelled L-Y-O-N-S, and she's a knitting teacher, designer, and author, and she did a post about the top 10... Oh, wait, that was from August. Okay, secretly I found this through um, the Kentucky Sheep and Wool. They are my, I have them on my personal Facebook page, by the way. My, I'm just a stalker. I don't post anything. Anyway, aside. But anyway, so they linked to this, but I just realized that it was actually in excess of a year old. But it's still travel. The one thing I wanted to mention, there's two things. There's like a list of 10. And again, you can just Google least favorite knitting myths. That's hers. And, um, but I did think that one of them was really good. And I feel like I should mention it because I thought this for a very long time. Well, there's two that I thought for a very long time. We'll say the first one first. To get a long tail cast on with an elastic edge, use a larger needle or two needles. Okay, I learned that forever. Did you learn that forever? Did you just trust it because somebody sold you? I did. I'll admit it. I sheeped on that one. Bah. Totally did it. It doesn't really work. <laughs> because what makes the, the cast on tight, as this is your needle, is not the loop that goes around this way. It's this, the bar that's underneath. That's what makes your cast on tight. So the only way to make it flexible is to space your loops further, which gives you more ease or flexibility in this bottom ropey bit down here. I know, so many of you were like, dude, don't do that. I'm old school. I learned it the, the wrong way. Here's another thing I learned the wrong way. You always slip the first stitch of every row. Always, no matter what, lie. Did you know that? That's a lie. Don't listen to anybody who tells you that. I don't care how fancy their pants are. Okay. If their pants are fancier than mine, you can listen to them. But let's face it, I got some fancy pants and mine are probably bigger than theirs. So I think I get extra credit. I'm just saying, maybe. I don't know, what do you think? But don't do it. 
<laughs> especially when you're gonna pick up a row or gonna do mattress. Oh my gosh, mattress seeming especially. And I thought this forever because I was always taught that way. I know I say taught. I was never t professionally taught, which may be why I knew so many wrong things. <laughs> but I picked them up with a knitting water cooler. And that information, much like your sex ed, should not come from peers. Should not come from peers. Just saying. It's equivalent, right? We laugh at the stories that kids make up about that. And yet, whoa, I just clearly slipped the stitch of every, first stitch of everything. Usually designers kind of know and they'll tell you in a pattern. <laughs> but another good rule of thumb is, unless it's just an uh, edge that's exposed to the world, you probably don't need to slip it. Probably. Especially if it's probably not gonna need to do that. Anyways, there's those two, that's all. Anyway, I just thought they were funny because I giggled when I read them. I was like, yep, I used to think that. And I think probably not even that long ago. <laughs> Maybe since I've started doing the podcast. I'm just going to say that in case I said one of those things wrong before. Because sometimes you even think something on your own, but you need somebody else to say it to be like, oh, yeah, that's right. I wasn't crazy. I totally thought that. You know, sometimes you just need that little extra confirmation. Okay. Let's talk about knitting and spinning. Okay, so I have made some more of my little hobbledehoy batlings. This one was already done. I, get, I did these three guys. These were not all this week. One of them last week too but aren't they so cute so I'm doing the colors individually and then just chain plying them and I figured out I'm getting so like I have two bunches and so I have at least two little batlings of each color so these guys are just two little batlings and excuse my varying mini skein sizes I'm not real precise <laughs> but even my, my little ones are really coming out to about half of the big ones. And I'm getting about 100 yards in the big ones and about 50 in the small ones, approximately. So, and they are a fingering weight. This was the finest spinning I've ever done. I know, right? I've never gotten a three ply fingering weight. I'm so excited. And these batlings are Polworth silk, which are not Polworth silk specifically, but they're like a Polworth base which I enjoy so much more than flipping Merino. <sighs> Merino. They aren't those pretty colors. Eek. So pretty. And now I'm currently taking, I still have more of those to do. <coughs> Sorry, I'm a little wheezy. I'm a little asthma-y today. I, I have no idea why. Um, so I'm taking a little break from those and I'm doing what I would like to pretend is my Valentine spinning. I don't know why I need to call it that, but I just want to. So I'm working on some Three Waters Farm. I've already lost a tag. Oh well. So this is one color. I believe this one is called Brown Velvet, but I could be totally wrong. I know that sounds crazy because it's purple, but it's my purple. I don't like purple, except this purple. This like grayish, brownish base purple, I love. Do not like a blue based purple or a red one. It's okay in small little bits like those, but generally, overall, not so much. But I love this one so much. So, I'm spinning this one originally, I got, and then I have this one. Did I say this is Three Waters Farm? This is their Polworth silk. Oh, I'm totally ingesting Polworth as we speak. Uh, uh. This one is called Plums and Pewter. And originally I got these thinking I would do one ply of each, do them as a two ply together. But now what I've decided to do is do a two ply of each. So I have two skeins and then maybe do like a, a two color shawl, like maybe a Paula's Sister Bay. That's the one that's two colors, right? So these are not my normal colors. I, mean, I guess that's why I'm calling it my Valentine spinning because it's not my normal colors, but it's beautiful. I love it. So yay that. Okay, on to knitting. I have no finished objects this week. I don't 
need to show you that. That's my sweater, but like it just looks like a longer blue rectangle. I'll show you when something exciting happens. Um, <clears throat> sorry. Let me shuffle. I did want to show you a little bit my, what's this one called? Ruxton. Yeah, my Ruxton shawl by D. O'Keefe. And it's in Copper Corgi's Jones Street Sport in the goldenrod colorway. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. Lolo Bars makes one scent. Well, I've only found the one. It's called, is it called Edward? It's not Edward, is it? No, I think it's actually Edward. Anyway, it's it smells and it makes everything you touch smell in a good way. So I, oh, it smells so good. So it's not too short of a needle to really show you, but I made good progress on it, so I thought I would show you a little bit. And I'm about to start the next section, the next kind of chart, essentially. Um, so yay, that, oh, he's still, it's lace, you know what I mean. You can't really tell until it's all said and done. Mm. Oh. Anyway, this yarn is very pleasant. I'm enjoying it quite a lot. It is a, what did I say? It has alpaca in it. I know lately it's been an alpaca time. Um, it's 60% superwash merino, 30% alpaca, and 10% silk. It is delicious. Delicious. It's very pleasant to work with. So, there's that. And then the other two things I will show you are newer projects. Okay. I was still to lay a pole in my mouth, so I, I'll look a bit like a cow chewing her cud while I'm all out. Not an attractive look, but whatever. Okay, recenter. I am knitting on the beeswax hat, and this yarn. Oh, okay. And the pattern is by Andy, Amy, Amy. Vandalar, V-A-N space D-E space L-A-A-R, but just, it's the beeswax hat. She also has mitts and a cowl, I believe. So I'm very, it's early days. It's early days. <laughs> Let's see if I can fumble around to show you this. Shall I? But do you love that yarn? I totally do. This is by Leading Men. Fiber Arts. This is the Dramaturge colorway, which is my favorite base. It's a DK. And this is the Copper Cloud base. It is so stinking pretty. I cannot even... That was a string, by the way. That was not a white spot that you just saw. It was just thread. Isn't it pretty? You really can't tell how pretty it is. I don't have magic lighting. Imagine a filter. Mmm, pretty. It's so pretty. And it's really nice to work with. And I really like, it is a superwash merino, I believe, but it's not a, a really tightly plied one. It feels a lot less ropey than a lot of the superwash merinos. It's so nice. I like it. I like it quite a lot. So there's that. And then one more. I am knitting on a pair of regia. That's what Susan B. Anderson says it is. A pair of regia socks. This is their six ply. And this is color number 6363. I got mine from Simply Sock Yarn. Um, I said a six ply, right? <laughs> okay. Beep. And this is what the sock looks like. This is a great color combination. Shaw. Puke, it's so pretty. I know, right? I never get a sock done in a week. I just started this week. <laughs> it's so pretty. And there's like six color repeats, so you're like, oh, I just want to see the next one. What's the next one gonna look like? Hmm. So, and I'm doing a 64 stitch sock for myself on size. I'm knitting this one magic loop, so I'm just knitting it on zeros. Um, and that's a little bit, uh, it's got more room in it than my normal sock, but I kind of like that for the sport weight socks because sometimes when it's really cold, I like to wear socks under my sport weight socks. Also, I wanted to do an afterthought heel, so a little bit extra room in there is a nice thing. Yay, that! 
I do really like this Regia. Um, if you recall, I just finished another pair of six ply socks that were opal. And that one, I had a lot more trouble with it being splitty. I forgot to mention that when I finished my socks. I love the way they feel. They look great. I know they're gonna wear really well. But the yarn itself, I did have more problems with it splitting. Not, again, not in a way that I would be like, I'm never knitting with this again. But I had, to, I had several times I had to drop down and pick up a, a row or a stitch that had been split and I noticed it later. Because lots of times sock knitting I do without looking. Well, lots of knitting I do without looking, but especially sock knitting. So that has a tendency to happen more frequently. Okay, we're going to take a break. I'm going to come right back with shameless self-promotion. Okay, okay then. Okay. Um, first off will be shameless self-promotion of the Pipeline Retreat. So the Knitting Pipeline Retreat in Washington, Maine is March 14th-ish, right? I'm going to put up a pre-order on February 14th. Um, so it's Valentine's Day. I'll put it up sometime in the morning. And then there will be, those spots will be open until the 19th. I'll close it at some point on the 19th. So, and the reason I do that, I will have a few of these bags when I'm actually at the retreat. I'm bending. Did I not say that? I'm sorry. So I will have some of these bags at the retreat, but I would like to be able to get an accurate fabric order in so that I don't have a ton of overage or underage. So yeah, plus you don't have to pay sales tax. I don't know if that's completely legal. I think it is, we're gonna pretend it is. Anyway, buy stuff in Washington, Illinois. It'll all work out in the end. <laughs> so, okay, so here are the patterns. Now, if you're not going to the Knitting Pipeline Retreat and you really like these patterns, no frets. I will have this fabric without the tag sometime in probably April, I think. My cat is so cockeyed, it's ridiculous. It's driving me crazy. This is why you don't live with a mirror in front of you. Because if you did, it would be crazy all the time. So they have a great Queen Anne's lace pattern. There is a dovey gray with, of course, the white. And then there is a, what is considered, what is officially called, I forgot it. Is it officially called coral? That doesn't sound right. It might be officially what it's called. But anyway, it's a nice color. And they have a great linen-y texture to them. And you'll have the super fancy knitting pipeline tag. So those will be available in large wedge and sweater sizes. Again, that pre-order will go up February 14th on Valentine's Day sometime in the morning. And it'll come down on February 19th. And there's no rush. Like, you don't need to be there in the morning on February 14th um, because it is uh, just a limited number of attendees. Really, though, it's like I'm drunk. Because there are a limited number of attendees, <laughs> there won't be a block on how many bags are available. Uh, but there will be a block once we get there. Like, after the uh, pre order is over and I'm actually at the retreat, there will only be so many there. Because you know, I gotta wear tags and all things. So that'll be happening. And then, originally I was going to have an update in March, February 13th, but I decided to move it back until the 20th, just to make my life more sane. We can all appreciate that, yes, no? Yes, no. Okay, and this will be a little red riding hood update. So what this update will have will be three sock sizes. They will be, right? I don't know why I'm so, I have no, like, no desire for Red Riding Good in any way, but I love these little mushrooms ever so much. I love the color combinations. I love the little house in the woods, and I really love how the wolf is drawn. I really enjoy everything about this, even though it's not typically my fabric at all. So there will be that. It has the faux bois lining. Mm -hmm. So we have that one. This one will be available in the sock size, which you're seeing here, and large wedge. There will be granny squares, right? This fabric totally looks like granny squares. 
or like super talented spirograph, but really like granny squares. <laughs> and it has an exciting blue lining. And then there's this is the last one in the sock. There's this guy who I don't know why, but I really love this fabric. And it is like a beautiful warm gray in the background, not a brown. Ooh, so pretty. It also has faux bois. That one is also available in this size. So this is what is considered a small wedge. I made it actually an inch deeper than I used to. So it's a little bit roomier now. And it has faux bois. <laughs> and then there's this guy who's available in the small wedge only. Can you imagine what's inside? Maybe it has faux bois. Anyway, I really love these so much. <laughs> They have a very nice hand too. They have a very nice, slightly brushed hand, which I'm enjoying. And then the ones I don't have ready to show you, but I feel like I have to show you a little bit anyway. Maybe I'll remember showing you again next week. I'll try. Are you ready? Are you ready? Are you ready? <gasps> right! It's like the little Matryoshka ready riding hood. I love it! <sighs> Why does, oh, okay. <laughs> I was like, why does the wolf have salt and pepper shakers on him? It's because he's also got a knife and a fork and a bandit like he's gonna eat. I was just confused for a minute. But anyway, so it also has happy mushrooms. Oh, I love this one so much. Maybe it's because Granny has such fab glasses and a casserole thing, right? She's got cookies, baby. But so there's that one, and again, that's that warm charcoal gray, which I'm really loving. It's like a brown gray. I love it. Like my brown gray purple. <laughs> and I also have that one in the white. And this will be available in large wedge and sweater sizes. So that's all the stuff. Oh my gosh, right? That was a lot of stuff. There may have been some embarrassing rambling. There totally was. See, I don't even know what I say. Just, just, just I don't watch these things again. It's the only way my self-esteem can remain intact. Anyway, I hope you have a lovely week. A super duper happy Valentine's Day. Okay. And I'll talk to you next time. Bye.